All praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, forever and ever. So let it be true. Love, honor, and respect to the Creator, Yahweh, and to His Holy Son, Yahweh Shai, who died for the 12 tribes of Israel. And double honors to the apostles of GMS, the four major prophets, the minor prophets, and the hopeful elect, the 144,000 Akium, who are pushing the word of God to the four corners of this earth. And Shalom to the great multitude of brothers and sisters and children who are watching the videos and that are learning every day. All praises to the Most High God. We're on another lesson. And today we're going to talk about the Great Famine. And when the sun becomes scorching, the scorching heat that's coming upon this earth. So we're going to start with Revelations chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And this is coming because we're already in the sixth seal and these are the bowls of judgment that are going to be coming upon this earth. So on verse 8 he says that the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and that's that great heat that's coming to the earth in the next 12, 24, 36 months it's going to be extremely scorching hot with high winds and that's why most all vegetation will be destroyed here in America and the four corners of the earth and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And it's twofold. It's talking about the scorching heat that's going to hit the four corners of this earth. And the final will be those missiles, thermal nuclear missiles that will hit America and other parts of the, of the earth. Verse 9, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over those plagues, and they did not repent and give glory to God. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 6. I'm here in the house of mourning. Like I said, I just have my a little light on here. chapter Revelations chapter 6 verse 5 and when he opened the third seal I heard the third living creature say come and see and I looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand and I heard a voice in the middle of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the olive oil and the wine and this that black horse represents famine and it's going to come from the scorching heat 
of 2022, 2023, and 2024. The next 12, 24, 36 months will be, the sun will become scorching onto this earth. And that's why men will blaspheme the name of God. And they still won't repent. That's how wicked Esau, Amalek, and the nations are. But this is judgment that's coming down from the heavenly Father, from the heavenly Father, Yahweh. And that Denarius is talking about one hard, one day's hard labor. <clears throat> one day's hard labor for a piece of bread. And then it'll, there'll be a time it'll be a week's hard labor for a piece of bread. And in time, it would be one month of hard labor for a piece of bread. So great famine is coming to America and to the four corners of this earth. And I'm going to go on. Verse 7. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures saying, Come and see. And, look, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, and by, and by the beast of the earth. So that great sword is World War Three. We're in the middle of World War Three. Russia is in Ukraine, and they're going to go after Moldova. They're going to go after the Baltics, Denmark, the Netherlands. They're not going to stop with Ukraine. They will never let NATO and the United States take Eastern Europe away from them. So we're in the middle of World War Three. It's going to escalate, and that's that pell horse and that's why the holy book says and his name was death the most high has already sent the four dreaded horsemen onto this earth it's and in the months ahead is this going to get more evil there's going to be there's going to be total destruction on this earth with hot heat fire and famine and total war and destruction and I'm going to go to now I'm going to go to the holy book of Genesis chapter 47 verse 1 so Joseph took five of his brothers and went to the to the Pharaoh and he told him my father and my brothers have come from Canaan with their flocks their herds and all that they own they are now in the region of Goshen. He then presented his brothers to the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh asked them, What is your occupation? We are shepherds, sir, just as our ancestors were. They answered, We have come to live in this country because in the land of Canaan, the famine is so severe that there is no pasture for our flocks. Please give us permission to live in the region of Goshen. The king, and the Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and your brothers have arrived, the land of Egypt is theirs. You see where the Pharaoh said to Jacob and his sons that the land of Egypt is theirs. So God's elect will eat. For God is with us forever and ever. One third of our people will eat. Two thirds of our people will starve in famine and in war. So he says, verse 5, And the Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and your brothers have arrived, the land of Egypt is theirs. Let them settle in the region of Goshen, the best part of the land. And there, and it, if there are any capable men among them, put them in charge of my own livestock. Verse 7, Then Joseph brought his father Jacob, and presented him to the Pharaoh. And Jacob gave the Pharaoh his blessings. See, the Pharaoh was there and he was humbled in front of Jacob. 
and Jacob gave the Pharaoh his blessings. He called upon Yahawabah Shimei and blessed the Pharaoh, for he gave the land to Jacob and to his sons, the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 8, And the Pharaoh asked him, How old are you? And Jacob answered, My life of wandering has lasted a hundred and thirty years. Those years have been few and difficult, unlike the long years of my ancestors and their wanderings. And Jacob gave the Pharaoh a farewell blessing and left. Then Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt, giving them property in the best of the land near the city of, Ram of Ramses. And as the Pharaoh had commanded, Joseph provided food for his father, his brothers, and all the rest of his father's family, including the very youngest. And the famine was so severe that there was no food anywhere. And the people of Egypt and Canaan became weak with hunger. Verse 14, and they bought grain. And Joseph collected all the money and took it to the palace when all the money in Egypt and Canaan were spent, the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Don't let us die. Do something. Our money is all gone. And Joseph answered, Bring your livestock and I will give you food in exchange for it. If your money is all gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph. And I will give you food in exchange for all your money. Because your money is all gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph. And he gave them food in exchange for their horses, sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. And that year he supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock. And the following year they came to him and said, We will not hide the fact from you, sir. that our money is all gone and our livestock belongs to you. There is nothing left to give you except our bodies and our lands. Don't let us die. Do something. So this is a time of great famine where they lost. Now they're giving their land and themselves to Joseph to be slaves. Don't let us die. Do something. Don't let us our fields be deserted by us and our land in exchange for food. We will be the king's slaves and we will own our land. You will own our land. Give us grain to keep us alive and seed so that we can plant our fields. And this is why you have to be prepared. And that's why I call out to the elect, to the brothers and sisters, be prepared. Sell everything you have and buy assets gold, silver, and food, and water. Be prepared. Be prepared for what's coming. And it's it's happening now. You don't want to be like these people. And this is what's happening here in America will be much greater. There'll be much a much greater famine than it was during the times of Joseph. He said, don't let us die. Do something. Don't let our fields be deserted. Buy us and our land in exchange for food. We will be the king's slave, uh, the, the Pharaoh's slaves. And he will own our land. Give us grain to keep us alive and seed so that we can plant our fields. So Joseph brought, Joseph brought all the land in Egypt for the Pharaoh. Every Egyptian was forced to sell his land because the famine was so severe and all the land became the king's, pro the Pharaoh's property. Joseph made slaves of the people from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land he did not buy was the land that belonged to, his, to the priest. They did not have to sell their lands and were the priest. 
the God's elect. So God is always will be with us till the end of time. And the only land he did not buy was the land that belonged to his priests. They did not have to sell their lands because the Pharaoh gave them an allowance to live on. And Joseph said to the people, You see, I have now bought you and your lands for, for the Pharaoh. Here is seed for you to sow in your fields. And at the time of harvest, you must give one fifth to the Pharaoh. You can use the rest uh, for the seed and for food for yourselves and your families. Verse 23, they answered, you have saved our lives. You have been good to us, Joseph. And you will be the Pharaoh's slaves. So Joseph made it a law for the land of Egypt that one-fifth of the harvest should belong to the Pharaoh. The law still remains in force. Only the land of the priest did not become the Pharaoh's property. So all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, forever and ever, so let it be true. Food shortages are becoming a major concern for many Americans, and that was just talking about the factory lockdowns and the supply chain issues. But now we're hearing terrifying stories of multiple random food processing plants and also food distribution centers randomly catching on fire and losing tens of thousands of pounds of food. Then you also hear the stories of multiple aircraft in different states randomly hitting food processing plants and causing them also to catch a blaze and you put that on top of how there is a fertilizer shortage and also fertilizer prices are skyrocketing then now we're hearing that fertilizer plants are also catching on fire and then union february 2022 where they said a food plant caught on fire over in uh in Hermiston, the sheerest food over in oregon where that caught on fire then over in uh columbia the Azure Standard Headquarter Facility, which is a food distribution plant, that caught on fire. Then over the Georgia General Mills plant was hit by an aircraft that caught on fire. And over in Idaho, the Idaho Potato, Potato and Food Processing Plant was also hit by an aircraft. Then the, over in Arizona, the Maricopa Food Pantry burned in a fire, losing 40,000 pounds of food. Then over Taylor Farms over in California, that caught on fire. Then over in Arkansas is a Nestle Frozen Foods plant that produces Hot Pockets, that caught on fire. And also a Walmart distribution center caught on fire as well, which is just crazy. And now we have this image going viral where it's just all the different food processing plants and distribution centers catching on fire all within two months of each other, which is causing lots of concern, but also combine that with the idea that you have a fertilizer plant over in North Carolina, a fertilizer plant over in uh, Yakima Valley, the fertilizer plant over in Kansas, all catching on fire, and combine that with CFIndustries.com talking about how Union Pacific is curtailing fertilizer shipments and delaying deliveries and preventing new rail orders from being taken, which if you saw my other video about this roughly, was I believe it was farmers in Texas who were talking about their crop is only up to eight feet when it's when their Texas farmers talking about their crop is only up to two feet when usually this time of year it's up to eight feet which is going to be a massive concern for next harvest season and combine that with the idea that seen it. In today's video, we're going to look at a question which seems even bizarre to even pose, and that is. Is the global food supply chain, especially in the United States of America, currently under attack? I know, I know it sounds crazy like I'm wearing my tinfoil hat, but I'm going to show you some uh, things in a moment on the shared screen which might make you kind of wonder if there's something strange and somewhat nefarious going on. Now, if you're worried about your friends and family and colleagues and everyone else, I would strongly suggest sharing this video with them today because it's been now nine months since I first put out a warning about the global food supply chain, uh, farming and everything else around this. And it's really only now in the last few weeks starting to come to the forefront. If you recall a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about cooking oil and why that would become uh, rationed and have shortages. In fact, it was probably a month ago when I first mentioned it when I was doing my weekly walk and talk and now it's just been announced. In fact, 
I, I didn't even know it had been announced until I was getting lots and lots of messages from friends and family members messaging me on the phone saying, have you seen this article? Cooking oil is now being rationed. Now let's look at a little bit of context first and foremost before we go into the shared screen here. And I'm going to show you some crazy stuff. We've already established that Russia is the main producer of fertilizers in the world because they have a lot of natural gas. A lot of natural gas is often required in order for the energy input in order to make fertilizer. They are not producing as much fertilizer, or if they are, they're not exporting it to unfriendly countries. Russia's also lost perhaps 50% of their wheat crop this year, and the, the Ukraine is not producing as much wheat this year for obvious reasons. We also know, because I covered this last year, that the UK largest fertilizer producing factories actually closed down. They just couldn't afford to keep it going. The government subsidized it. The EU has also stopped producing in some of the plants a lot of fertilizer. So we know we also have the National Farmers Union putting out warnings saying that there isn't enough fertilizer. Some have just months left of supply, meaning a lower yield this year. A lot of farmers also haven't planted the crops they would normally plant. So that is just a bit of context for you around this. But now I just want to show you some of the things that are going on. Let's go to the shared screen here. So what we seem to have ever at the moment is things like this. Huge fires throughout food distribution networks, food processing plants. Uh, let's just go through some of these. This one was the one that made me say, hold on, hold on, what's going on here? Plane crashing into food processing plant. Planes crashing into General Mills plant. Okay. Huge explosion and raging fire as plane crashes into food factory. And we'll go back to the screen in a moment and cover a lot of these. These are dozens and dozens and dozens of them. Now, I was thinking about this and I was looking at some of the statistics around the odds of a plane crashing. I mean, I mean, it's very small. It is very, very low numbers of planes that crash, so it's very small. I then looked at the land mass in the USA and how much was just, you know, open plains and farmland and national parks and the like, you know, mountain regions and water. And I looked at how much was actually populated areas in cities and the like. I then looked at how much of that was actually industrial. And then I looked at how much of the industrial was actually food processing or fertilizer plants and things like that. And, and let me tell you, it was, it was tiny. It was so, so small. And then I thought, what is the odds? And I tried to sort of computate this. What are the odds of a plane, and again, different size planes, crashing into a fertilizer plant, into a food distribution plant? So slim that it's even hard to try and get this as a statistic. It's tiny. So let's just go back to the screen again. So not only do we have these planes crashing into fertilizer plants, um, again, two confirmed dead after plane collides into food warehouse. And then we have all of these headlines. So made right steak company fire ruled accidental. It's bizarre to me. And this is why I'm a little bit skeptical of a lot of this stuff because I'm looking at the headlines and then I'm looking at the result later on and they're either being ruled accidental or it was a, you know, an electrical fault. Now I'm sure this is very normal. If I was in the insurance industry, I'd probably be able to pull up all sorts of statistics and say this amount of food processing and industrial and chemicals and whatever else explode or set on fire each year. I'm sure that those statistics are out there, but just being a very rational, logical um, person, I would say, why does it keep saying cause unknown or or you know things like that if i i'm pretty sure fire brigades firefighters they have investigators for these things and how often would it say cause 